Okay, so we're down at the southern or ghetto end of the, of the plots, um, and we're going to do we're going to use the pH test kit um, as per the prac, so or rather the digging deeper uh, prac sheet. Here it is, right here. So it covers a few things. There's plant nutrition, uh, some things in here which I'll talk about in another video. But we're going to the back where we're going to talk about uh, pH. Always written with a small p, then a capital H, and a few years ago, I asked a few very brainy colleagues who are, you know, as it were, genuine scientists, not one for me, and I asked them what pH stood for, and they didn't know. So I looked it up, and it stands for the power of hydrogen atoms. Isn't that awesome? I have no idea how that chemistry works, other than the more hydrogen atoms you have, uh, the more acid the soil is. And Correct. the fewer the hydrogen atoms, the, Sash? Alkaline. The more alkaline it is. So, getting to the sort of real uh, facts of the matter, pH measures whether a soil uh, is uh, acid or alkaline. And that, the, you know, the practical import of that is that that has an effect on plant growth. So, whether a soil is, you know, extremely acid or extremely alkaline will affect the availability of standard nutrients like phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, magnesium, the whole lot. Um, now the thing is that most soils, or at least for growing food crops, or most crops rather, are kind of happy at sort of like 6, which is acid, to 6.5, up to neutral, which is 7, and then beyond that maybe to 7.5, so slightly alkaline. And the chart, that, you know, it's very common to, uh, to see on the internet, here it is on your sheet here. This is a very good one. Uh, that I actually got from a cannabis growing website. Not that I grow cannabis, I'm just looking for a really good one. This is true, honestly, that's why I haven't referenced it, just in case it created an issue. Um, but it was a really good one. So, um, so it really shows you, you know, the decre the, where nutrients decrease uh, in terms of availability, depending on whether a soil is acid or alkaline. One of the things, and usually that's what we worry about. We worry about key macro and micronutrients becoming unavailable as a soil becomes more acid or more alkaline. So we want to go somewhere in that sort of happy zone, Goldilocks zone, if you will, of you know just slightly acid or slightly alkaline or bang in the middle at neutral seven. Uh, but what people often forget is that some nutrients become overabundant depending on the acidity or the alkalinity. And aluminium is the classic one in acid soils where it becomes extremely toxic, right? So overly abundant, uh, a, a, you know, a luxurious amount of the nutrient, if that's even the right way of putting it. Okay. So what we're going to do, we'll just quickly show you how to use the kit here. Now Peter May in his soil lecture I think mentions that if you really want to nail uh, the pH of your soil, whether it's acid or alkaline, you really need to get done by a lab. But these little kits that you can buy at Hardware's, you know, Bunnings, are still a pretty good approximation. Every now and again they'll get a bad batch of kits, and we had that a couple of years ago where the kits were, that we, everything was so way out with our tests here with all the students, we knew something was wrong because the truth is uh, these plots, of, the soil down here, this um, silty loam is pretty consistently 6.5, uh, which is slightly acid, which is a good vegetable growing um, pH to have. Now, I've chosen Emilio's plot and I'm naming names now because unlike everyone else's, his zucchinis have got this really profound uh, you know, yellowing, discoloration. So Sasha's just honing in on that now. Now, it's really interesting because I have no idea what's causing that. It's literally the only one in the whole of, of the 46 plots. And, but you know, on the other hand, everything else is growing well. The tomatoes are actually as good as anyone's. Really lush. So it may be nothing to do with pH, but this would be, a, it's a good one to look at in case it's, a, maybe it's too alkaline, too acid. Who knows? Okay, so what we're going to do, um, this is how we do it. It's all very, very uh, basic. First up, we get a bit of soil. Now, they provide you with this pathetic little plastic spoon, but, you know, that's for the mixing, I guess. But I'm going to just have a bit of a scrounge around. And you don't want it to be lumpy, so you want it to be broken up a fair bit. Now I can use a plastic spoon. You don't need that much. Okay, so hopefully we can get to the bottom of the mystery, the great mystery of Emilio's yellow zucchini leaves. I hope you're watching this, Emilio. My consultancy rates are pretty high. 
That's probably too much. There's a worm in there, so that's good. It's probably too, way too much. Okay. Do you think it looks like intervenal chlorosis or it's a bit different? What is it? Intervenal chlorosis, which would be an indication of a lack of nitrogen, I think. Yeah, I get, no, that's a fair point. Um, but a lack of nitrogen, but then look at the tomato. Mm. There's actually fruit on here too. That so might be so, something a bit more random. Okay, so first of all, we put the, the, uh, the dye uh, indicator in. Something more random, exactly. So then we make a bit of a paste. Oops. Oh, there you go. That's definitely a paste. Almost looks like wasabi. Sort of. With a bit of imagination. Okay, that's, yep. All right. Now, by the way, this is really worth doing. If you, if you do landscaping projects, uh, for example, even with ornamental plants, it's really worth doing these pH tests because as some of you have done soils before know, you get these herbic soils, meaning that you know builders have been there and they've dumped you know um, cement or something, someone chucked some rubbish over here, the soil's been turned over. You can have very varying pH across um, an urban landscape site. So this is not just to do with veggies, and that's especially if you're quoting, you know, jobs worth thousands of dollars. Now we're putting in the, what's it called again, the barium sulfate, and that's going to, um, I know, it's being recalcitrant, so I'll just take the lid off. I don't want to waste too much though. Okay, now, oops, bang. So now what's going to happen is, oh, it's just already, yeah, it's changing colour. And all you do uh, is find your chart and you try and match the colour, the barium sulphate going into the mix there. And it's looking, what do you reckon, Sash? Let's, let's get everyone, can everyone at home see that? <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, with six. Oh, I'm going for a six. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, yeah. Um, look, it's it's doing its usual thing. It's a yeah, six. Six, six and a half. Six and seven, a half, right? Six, six. God, and even half. you reckon seven even? Look, it's certainly. Yeah. It's yeah, maybe let, not a seven, maybe. We're, so we're going to call it slightly acid. Perfect. Yep, slightly acid. Um, now you know, depending on the soil profile, if you have a duplex soil or, or again a soil that's been mashed up and turned over as often happens in um, commercial or domestic sites in a big city like Melbourne, you, you'd also test deeper down as well, um, just to make absolutely sure. But one thing we can now say is that Emilio's yellow zucchini leaves are nothing to do with pH in this instance. Very the zucchini's even yellow. Okay, it is a yellow zucchini variety, I think we... Is that got... the mystery? <laughs> No, yellow zucchini. I think we would remember buying yellow zucchinis. Uh, no, no, no. It did with, had three seeds left. No way. Yeah, definitely. But the, the yellow zucchini plants do not have yellow zucchini leaves. Uh, or do they? I might have to resign immediately. No, no. Trust me, folks. <laughs> this is something wrong with this zucchini. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, please read the prac sheet uh, carefully. I might even do a bit of a um, very brief uh, you know, lecture capture just on a few issues to do with, well, guide you through some of the information on the LMS. But otherwise, that's it. It's pretty simple, all right? Thank you.